Good afternoon, this is your pilot speaking, with just a little flight information. We're currently preparing to depart, you may want to know. Shortly after takeoff, we're going to catch a glimpse of the Grand Canyon on your right hand side. We're going to be flying at an altitude of 37,000 feet today, and at an airspeed of 400 miles an hour. A couple of little facts here, I'm packing a Colt King Cobra, that's a 357 caliber firearm with a black rubber grip and a 6 inch barrel. Also the co-pilot is carrying a Kimber custom defense pistol with all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a custom gun of that kind, with an alloy frame and a bevel treatment on the entire gun. Both guns are capable of piercing body armor at a distance of up to 27 feet, and could put a hole in human bone and flesh the size of the Grand Canyon, which by the way is going to be coming up on the right hand side, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Do you insist on saying that before every flight? Ah, why not? It keeps the passengers on their toes. Ready for pre-flight checks? Standing by. APU. Engine 1. Engine 2. Check. Flaps. Ailerons. Elevators. Rudder. Check. Everything in working order. N209 to draft control. I'll record for takeoff. Over. How long have you been flying, if you don't mind my asking? Ha, <laughs> too long, my friend. What caught your interest? Just a little event, you know as the Pearl Harbor attacks? It wasn't long after I heard the news that I was in the air. I was assigned to the 360th Bombing Squad. We flew a B-17 bomber which we named the Snap Crackle Pop, which came to be quite an ironic name. By our ninth mission I ranked Staff Sergeant, or Buck Sergeant as it was in the war. Then, by the grace of God, I survived. Hey, Buck Sarge, why the hell is you doing this mission in the middle of the day, anyways? Where it? You can ask that to the Major when we get back. Yeah, if we get back. That's it, Lewinsky. Keep it positive. Wait, Coy Boy, how much longer have we got to the target? About 30 minutes. We're over the outskirts of Paris right now. Buck Sarge, this your parachute? Yeah, there's not enough room for it down here. You should have it on. Yeah, and suffocate to death. He was right. I should have had it on. See, I was in the ball turret, which is basically like sitting inside the soccer ball hanging from the belly of the aircraft. There's just no room to be wearing a parachute, but I should have been. Lewinsky! Yes, Buck Sergeant? Start arming the ball! Yo, Buck Sergeant, we got Jerry's on a six! On it! When you see him, you don't get long to react. A few seconds, hold on. Then they disappear behind the sun, so you can't get a good look at them. Where are they? How long to the target? Uh, it's, it's 20 minutes. Frick up! I tell you, there's nothing scarier than the sound of passing bullets inches from your face. No, actually, there is more scary sound. That would be the sound of the wings snapping. The plane was now fully vertical, spinning and aimed straight at the ground. Being in the ball turret meant my exit was in the rear of the aircraft. It being vertical meant it was above me. I scrambled up through the plane. It was still spinning real quick. I was more scared then than I ever was before. It was like being trapped inside of a falling bomb. Eventually, I got free. For a second, I was relieved. Ha! I thought it was safe. Then I looked down. It was like one of them Looney Tunes cartoons. That put the fear of God back into me. I felt off and wheezy, like I couldn't breathe. Then I blacked out. I proceeded to fall 22,000 feet without a parachute. I was half awake. I wasn't sure what was going on. It was warm, peaceful. Was I dead, I thought? Am I dead? Hunt, leave it! Nope, I weren't dead. I've been drifting in and out of consciousness for quite some time now. I was in a haze. 
I found myself amongst hundreds and hundreds of soldiers. For you, the war is over. I am a doctor. I know if we are enemies, but I will do my best to save your life. Then he did. I spent the rest of the war in prison and was finally freed by the Russians at the end. I never found the doctor who saved me. Impact, made by Harry Binstead, starring Oscar Cole as Staff Sergeant Alan McGee, Nathan Bateman as co-pilot and German doctor, Rob Husson as Jeff Curry and Nazi One, Eamon Alassadi as Lewinsky, and Harry Binstead as Richard and Nazi Two.